May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Some of you might be old enough to remember the song by Bob Dylan, You're Gonna Have to Serve Somebody. Remember that one? It resonates with today's gospel, and it goes like this. You may be an ambassador to England or France. You, may, you might like to gamble. You might like to dance. You may be the heavyweight champion of the world. You may be a socialite with a long string of pearls. But you're going to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you're going to have to serve somebody. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. That song was on his album in 1979, Slow Train Coming, and it was his last hit single, and it won the Grammy Award for the best male vocal that year in 79. And interestingly enough, that song also marked Bob Dylan's conversion to Christianity. You're going to have to serve somebody. He said it in a, he always would drag out the word serve somebody. And he now knew who he would be serving. It was Jesus Christ, the Lord. Jesus is asked a question in the reading from the gospel today. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? The cleverness of this question is meant to trap Jesus. It's beyond clever. It's like being at one of those congressional hearings when a senator says, just answer the question, please, ma'am. Is it yes or is it no? I think we've seen a lot of that in the news recently. And using deductive reasoning, the Pharisees asked Jesus whether it's lawful to pay the imperial tax that funded Roman occupation. Now, no one likes paying taxes. Arthur Godfrey, who had a TV show once, he said, you know, I feel honored to pay taxes in America. The thing is, I could probably feel just as honored for about half the price. And someone also mentioned that, you know, the Eiffel Tower is the Empire State Building after taxes. If Jesus answered, yes, pay the taxes to Caesar, the people would turn against him. If he answered no, then he would have positioned himself over and against the Romans, which was not a wise thing to do, because they were the occupying force in his land. But Jesus offers this ingenious response. He holds up a coin of the empire, the only coin that be could be used to pay the tax in question, and he says, whose image is on this coin? And the people answer, why, the emperor's. Now, Caesar's image was supposed to convey his divinity. He was a god in Rome, which means that holding up that coin is breaking the first two commandments for the Jews of Israel, the first commandment to love and obey God, to put nothing in the place of God, and the second commandment to have no other gods before me. So Jesus says, give, therefore, to the emperor the things that belong to the emperor and to God the things that belong to God. It's the briefest sentence and yet so profound as it reverberates to us down through the centuries today. Render unto Caesar, the old translation goes, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. Now, when you think of a coin, you think it has two sides. You might think that Jesus is saying God and Caesar are two kind of equally weighted choices. Two sides of a coin, but they're not equal at all. Caesar will never be a fraction of our God, the omnipotent, the omniscient, the immortal one. As we see in Isaiah, God says, 
I make weal, I make woe. I am the Lord, and there is no other besides me. There is no God. And when we know the living God, the creator of the universe, or you might say the multiverse, it's not hard to choose between the real and the false. When we know the living God, we know and we choose who we will serve. Render unto God what is God's. And we belong to God. So in this passage today, could Jesus be inviting us to renew our faithfulness to our great and good and all-powerful God? It's so tempting in this election season to escalate conflict and increase divisiveness. With November 3rd just two and a half weeks away, the words of Jesus remind us of the importance of going to church before we engage with our civic responsibility of voting. Jesus calls us to higher purpose. So when we hear the words of Christ today, and when we remember the forgiveness that underlies our faith and the grace that each of us has received, as well as the grace that we are called to pass on to others, it gives us pause before we go out and choose our new leaders at the ballot box. May we confirm that our chief loyalty is to the kingdom of God over any political party or any candidate. The God who gave us our very life and every blessing that we enjoy, that's the God that we serve. Does that mean we don't say anything about the issues of the day? No. But it means when we name the issues that are going on in our society, we also recognize the complexity of those issues, and we apply our faith to them, not leaving our brain at the door of the church, but using the gifts of rationale that God gave us, using the gifts of our hearts that our faith is so engaged with, does God want us to treat some people as less than others? Does God want us to treat some unequally? No. Or to diminish the humanity of any person? No. So we have to hold up the values that Jesus lives out, values that put God's will first. And that will help us to make holier decisions. I'll just wait till the motorbikes go by. part of the fun of worshiping on the lawn. <laughs> and one of these days, we're going to have a blessing of the motorcycles right here. I guarantee. We serve a loving and generous God, is what I want to say. And voting is underway right now. I've already voted. Maybe some of you have, too. And it's important for us to take our part by being valiant seekers after justice and freedom for all, and by doing the right thing checking that it's our faithfulness to God that's the impetus for our action. So let's pray. May God strengthen our faith and help us choose wisely and guide us in all of our decisions. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you got to serve somebody. Who do you serve? Let it be the Lord. Amen.